clubhouse with a lot of people. It's like right. people have these preconceived notions of all of the social media, like Twitter and Instagram, where there's verification badges and follower counts are the economy. And then they come to a clubhouse and set up follow for follow rooms because they think. Tell me more. Gonna... Yeah, I, I want to tell. I just set up my new description. I wrote a nice description today. Yeah. My pro, my bio. Tell me more like about Clubhouse because I just listened yeah. to it. Like it's one of example of where it was like, oh, there's this new social, there's this new whole fucking movement. It's like this new YouTube, you know? Yeah. It's, 10 years ago, it would have been like, holy shit, there's this yeah. big new thing, you a know? A lot of people have been comparing it to like early days of Facebook or the early yeah. days of YouTube or the early so, days of Twitter. What is Clubhouse for the people that don't know? Yeah, so for the people that don't know, chat Clubhouse is like uh, an app based around chat rooms. So uh, there's... The re- going along the it being called Clubhouse, there's like a hallway that you would walk down. Think of if you were at a conference and there's all of these rooms having different discussions. The hallway, which is, I guess, the most equivalent thing to a feed right. from other social media apps. It's not the same, but that's the closest parallel to it. In your feed, it's called the hallway and it would be like you're walking down the hallway and you can see all of these different rooms with the titles. Yeah. And when you go into those rooms, there's people having a conversation on the stage, which is all of the people that are talking. Then there's an audience. So the people that are just listening, you can treat it like radio where you're just tuning into different rooms that are talking about topics or treat it like a podcast where you're just tuning into conversations around topics and just put it on the background and listen. Or you can also hold your own kind of rooms, have conversations with people that you know, or people that you don't know, have public rooms for random people to jump into, have social rooms for people that you follow and want to have conversations to be able to see your room jump in or you could have private rooms where you invite and ping in like five people that you want really want to talk to and just have a little conversation and you can follow people to see more of the conversations that they're jumping into and uh especially in the beginning since it is invite only there were a lot there was a lot of value on the platform because there were a lot of it basically started with important people and important people would only invite other important people yeah um when i jumped on the first week of november their estimate is around like thirty thousand people wow the first week of november so when i went on clubhouse and think about in general the rule is 80 20 20 percent of the audience is going to is going to provide 80 percent of the topics in the engagement that's across yeah any platform same thing on yeah. twitter same thing on instagram 20 percent of the people are going to present going to provide 80 percent at the job the too <laughs> yeah yeah everything um and on clubhouse back on the first week of november 20 percent of thirty thousand was like six right it's like six yeah. six hundred people wow yeah so that was like 600 people that's less people than some people have in their high school graduating class wow so I basically saw all of the same people all the time, and it was like I knew a, saw a lot of familiar faces, and it was really easy to build relationships, and it was really it was really awesome. And a lot of people were there was a sense of trust because of the fact that it was invite only. Everybody felt like everybody on Clubhouse was somebody that somebody felt was important. Yeah. So there was a sense of trust that whenever you were having a conversation, one you could trust them to be an intelligent person and have an actual conversation with them and two you trust that if you gave value to them there was a way that most people could give value back to you okay so there was a lot of bartering of relationships there was a lot of hey i'm going to give you this this information because i know 30 minutes from now when i go in somebody else's room i'm going to get just as much information as i gave yeah i saw some millionaire dude today like i saw i checked his profile out and everything he built like 30 businesses invested in like early investor in Uber, whatever. This dude was answering questions like, hey, I'm starting my startup. I'm doing my business and I don't really know how to like progress every day. You know, I don't know how to keep myself on track. This dude broke it down. Like do the one goal. Like what's your one goal for the business? Get consumers. Okay. Every single morning, do the one goal that's going to get you closest. And then he's like to getting consumers and he started like breaking down shit. I was like, bro, and this is for like today, fucking right? free. Yeah. You know, I entered for a month, two ago, minutes, a month ago, those conversations that are now like maybe yeah. a couple minutes each, it would be one person talking to one person for like 30 minutes. Wow. 
Like I'm one not on even one. joking. It was literally one on one. Like artists would have whole conversations with managers. Uh, you, it was it. I remember I jumped into a room, my first day on Clubhouse. There was some kind of entertainment lawyer conference happening. All of these lawyers were in one room on Clubhouse, and they're all just talking about entertainment lawyer stuff. And yeah. then they start. Wow. And people were just asking questions. And all of these entertainment lawyers were just like, yeah, this, this, this. They were just spewing information. Wow. It, it was, like, it was great. It was literally, like, just sitting in a room with a bunch of lawyers and just Well, thinking about it, it's smart. You're, like, you're on Clubhouse, and you got some in into some legal trouble. I'm not saying that that's what they were doing, but, you know, you, there's yeah. a lawyer group. Or it's also going to no, be smart for people who are going to who's going to need help. Or services is gonna become a way where people can be connected exactly to people what in like, whatever way they want. You that's know, literally what was happening. It was like, all right, I'm gonna give this information, and then people would follow up afterwards, and then for a lot of people, it transferred to clients outside of the app. It like a lead magnet. It can be a lead it magnet. Transferred you know? to relationships with people outside of the app that were profitable for both people. Yeah. And now you. S and it's now you can still find that it's rarer because there's so much more fluff and so many more consumers on the app. Right. But now in order for you to get, get a following and stuff, the quality of it has to be bigger because the quality of it has to increase because now like, okay, you're going to get exposure, but unless you like providing like either good questions or good insights or good talking, like you're not, and they're not going to follow you. So it's like a less no, no, of a no, no, bullshit. No, 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 not even that scratch. That whole really? Thing because that part, just getting people to follow you, when you think of the bartering system, if you're just getting people... Oh, I'm, I'm not looking at no, like no, 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 people no, no, no. following let me, me, let me, but finish, like... Let me finish, let me finish. Yeah. So if you're looking at just getting people to follow, right? Before, every you could kind of trust that everybody that followed you could give you value. Yeah. Now, because there's so many more consumers, if some... That, like, you can have a large following, but most of the following is consumer. Yeah. And you're just, you're getting attention for being somebody who provides information. Information, but yeah. But you're not, you, you could be doing that all day without getting into the rooms with the other people that can provide value and having large, really meaningful conversations. Right. And that's another thing that I've started to see is a lot of people that were having really meaningful conversations have started to break off and start holding their own rooms instead of all congregating in one major room every day. Yeah. Which it's, is, I think is, it's, I, I, I hope that, you know, there's come back to some core rooms, but also at the same time, so a lot of those core rooms that are happening, they're just private and social now. Yeah. That happens a lot where 90% of the people on clubhouse will never see the rooms with the most value. Damn. Yeah. But like if you are somebody who is a professional in Clubhouse and you know and you have a network outside of Clubhouse, like Clubhouse is the perfect place to continue to A, build relationships and you can do a lot of good on Clubhouse. So yeah, you just can't it's, approach it's it. You just can't approach. I feel like in order to get the most value out of Clubhouse, especially right now, you need to approach it not like a consumer. Like that conversation that we were talking about all the way at the beginning where it was like yeah. one day consume. And the other day, produce and see what yeah. the difference is. Yeah. That's a conversation that I've had to have with myself a lot, which is like, all right, between the times that I'm hopping on Clubhouse, how many of these times am I hopping on to actually hold a room or be a moderator in a room and be part of the conversation versus just hopping on, just taking in information for the sake of taking information? Yeah. And I, had a, I actually had a conversation with myself like two days ago where I was like, all right, I need to like... At least 75, 80% of the time I hop on Clubhouse needs to be, I'm contributing to conversations. I'm being a moderator. I'm trying to contribute to the Clubhouse community. I'm not yeah. just taking. Right. I think that's very interesting. And you got us into it in the Museum meeting and then I signed up for it and I kind of left it for a few days. Today Bro, in the morning, so I took my iPad excited out. excited for when we start holding Museum. Dude, it's going to be crazy and we're going to be able to do so many things and with it. Like there's so much value that we can offer. Not even that. These conversations, this conversation that we're having yeah. right now, me and you, we can do this on Clubhouse. Like, Yeah, week. that was going to say, podcasting people, podcasting people, bro, if you're smart, and no, bro, get on that shit. Best, like 
me and you should definitely start having more clubhouse rooms and just having conversations. Yes. I, I enjoy. Bro, I think this is the rooms. longest fucking podcast I've had so far without. I know. We're still one hour 43. We're going no, strong, bro. Well, it was one of the right. longest ones. <laughs> um, I highly. I really hope that we do these conversations on clubhouse. Yeah. Right? Because of the fact that I enjoy hosting rooms on clubhouse. I love them. Dude, I love I it. I want to learn, you know, like the dynamics of it a bit better. I find it difficult. It is extremely difficult to to hop in and start a room on Clubhouse without at least one other person. Okay. It is ex- like if you just pop into a room and you don't have, at least have like one person to like start the topic with, yeah. you'll just sit there by yourself and people will hop in. And it's like, hey, and then they'll dip out. But if you have at least one person in there that like, like me and you, we're like this going back and forth that we've been doing for an hour and 43 minutes. Yeah. We can start doing a clubhouse and then people will join the conversation because, Oh, they're having a good conversation. Right. You know, they're vibing and whatnot. And then it's pretty cool. all of a sudden we pull more people into the conversation and people who vibe with the energy, raise their hand to come speak on the stage. And then before you know it, we have nine people on the stage having a great conversation. And even if there's not a whole bunch of people in the audience, we still had a great conversation between nine people. And sometimes they should- if you, Sorry, go so, ahead, yeah. Sometimes if you're having a great conversation with nine people, it turns into like a huge room with like a hundred people in the room just having a conversation, right? Do you think they're gonna open it up to more people? Like each room like increase the size or make a separate room or instead of calling it a room, they can call it an amphitheater and when there you can do no, a thousand be, people. So it's all like gonna that. be called a room and you can have a, the cap on room membership, right? Now, like how many people you can have in one room is around 5,000 now okay. only because of the fact that that's because it's still like a beta app okay and they've realized that when it starts getting more than 5,000 is when they start having problems with infrastructure and being able to support the okay market. they're yeah. going to boost it soon obviously for sure yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay that was my that's thing because i saw like there was a some type 2,000 so i was like okay so there's not many followers that can be in there for now you know but yeah. it's cool but now Dude, it's at like a 1 million people in Clubhouse. I was going to ask you, for people that are already on there, how would you go about becoming more engaged into these conversations? Because sometimes you can join groups and you you can raise your hand or whatever. Like, How, how do you get to become a, a moderator on some of these groups? Well, one, if you want to become a moderator, host rooms, your own room. Rooms, sorry. Host rooms. your own room. That's one. Okay. If you want to become a moderator, host your own room. Um and then two if you want to get involved in clubs well up the clubs wait for when they're having questions and ask good questions like when you when you get to talk in rooms that aren't your own contribute to the conversation okay first. make the first thing that comes out of your mouth be contributing to the conversation not plugging yourself yeah I no of course you, if the first thing that comes out of your mouth when you are given the floor to speak is a plug of yourself Oh yeah, hey by by the way, I can help you with that. (laughs) People will ignore every word after that. Like if you if you like general like legitimately go, if someone goes, Hey, I'm looking for somebody to just help me with marketing to build a brand for my EP, and then you go, Hey, uh, DM me, I'll help you, that's a different story. But if someone goes, Hey, we're running a room for like music for artists, and like, hey, uh Vlad, what's it what what do you do you have a question do you have a comment you want to add to the conversation and like especially if there was a conversation going on like the first thing on your mouth is hey yeah my name's vlad i work for museamp i do marketing and blah 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 and you go on like a 15 second rant about just what you do and then you go yeah and i would love to offer any services that i do to anybody in here and then uh, oh yeah the one thing that i wanted to add to the conversation was yeah that like it's, and doesn't start on the good foot. <laughs> people was like, all right, why didn't you just say the one thing you did want in the conversation? Because when people will actually listen to what you have to say is when they ask you for it. Yeah. So the second yeah. they go, hey, Vlad, you know, that was a really insightful question you asked. Did you want to talk about, like, what do you do that, you know, you thought of this sexy question or what do you do that you're interested in this topic? I was like, oh yeah, I'm interested in marketing because I went to school for it and I work in my own startup right now that's doing it. Like, oh, you work in a startup? What's your startup? And all of a sudden they're like, you're a cool person. I want to know what you do instead of, yeah. oh, this guy's plugging himself. I just want him to contribute to the conversation. Yeah, that's that's a good point. That's a valid point. So I think what this platform is going to be, be able to offer is a sense of authenticity or yeah. the currency on it, better said. And it's going to, it's going to be authenticity, sorry. It's going to reintroduce the skill of conversation. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, thank fucking God. And, do, bro, why do you think I started this podcast, man? Because I was going fucking crazy. I couldn't have it's conversation so with anybody. It's to have, like, it, it, it's different. It's crazy, bro. And at school, it was nice because when I was in school and I was doing a Where's the Time Gone, which is a podcast that I ran for a while. Yeah. And I've since passed down to uh, one of my friends who's still at the school that I was going to. Where's the Time Gone was meant to be a conversation between student leaders on... Uh, especially like upperclassmen and things like you know they learned in school the conversations that it, an underclassman and all the questions that underclassmen want to ask of the upperclassmen but yeah you know our, the, especially these upperclassmen like they're busy they're presidents of clubs or they're presidents sometimes of multiple right clubs, or they're a president of a club and they're also helping at the school or they're pre or they're working a co-op while also in school like they're doing a whole bunch of shit and Often the people that can provide the most value are the people that have the least time to provide the value. Yeah. Right. So that was why I wanted to have that podcast to be somewhere that I could record conversations around the common questions like, all right, how do you fit in fitness around, you know, your busy school schedule? How do you stay healthy? All right, well, uh, stay looking at this cafeteria food, what do you suggest in order to, to stay healthy on campus? Things yeah. as simple as that. And all the way up to, all right, how do you balance being a president of a club, homework, and then, like, actually looking to past college? How do you balance, like, in-college success and like looking past college? Yeah. All of these conversations were conversations that I would get asked myself as a student leader. And I was like, look, I don't have all day to sit here and talk to you about Yeah, this. to answer to everybody the yeah. same question. Yeah. And if yeah. I could just record it once. Right. And I could, like, I always had something that even if I couldn't, like, I would love to have a conversation with you, but if I don't have the time, hey, go listen to this podcast. I can't sit here and, like, have coffee with you right now, but I, I talked about it with Maria. She was the president of the Stute, and that was great. Go listen to this podcast, right, yeah. uh, where we talked about it. If at least having that to point people towards, for me, was something that I really wanted to do, and it was difficult because, first of all, I knew most of the people that I knew at the school wouldn't be able to be on the podcast because they just wouldn't be able to contribute to it. And yeah. then the people that were, that that I knew that I wanted to have on and that would contribute, I, I, I saw two things happen. One, some people were really busy and it was just difficult to schedule. And then there were a lot of people that 